everyone, it's Lore. Today's video is going to be a bookshelf tour. So before we jump in, I just wanted to say a few things. Um, first, my bookshelf is not very organized. It's mostly organized by genre, if anything, or by age group. Um, and then the rest, it's all, it's all organized by vibes, basically. I do have two bookcases, this one behind me, and then I have one in my living room. But I don't think I'm going to get into that one today just because filming this one is already going to be a lot of work. <laughs> and you know what? I just honestly don't want to. <laughs> Neither are exactly how I would want them 100%. But I don't think my bookcases are ever going to look 100% how I want them. They're not dusted either. So if there's a bunch of dust mind your business also i do not have all of my books on display i do have some books in storage mostly books from when i was a younger teenager my nose is really stuffy so i apologize for any weird sounds or like noises or congestion type issues but yes also i'm going to put timestamps for parts of my bookcase if you're more interested in certain aspects over the other let's jump right in actually i do have a few items that i sit on top of my shelf um, one being a TV that um, rarely gets used, so I, I should sell it, but this is really shaky, so apologies for that in advance. I'm just not great at filming. But on this side of the bookcase top, I hold all of my jewelry, which I don't wear jewelry that much, but I do like having a few pieces. So let me just move that out the way. So. This is a Mulan figurine. I honestly don't remember the brand name, but I'll put it somewhere on screen for you guys. I found her at Hot Topic and I was super pumped because Mulan is like my actual favorite Disney movie and she's one of my favorite characters ever. Then if we move over here, I have some more Funkos. I have Kronk, which is also another movie that I freaking love. And then I have, actually, obviously if I have them, then I love the movie. So that's, that should just go without saying. These three are in protective cases because they're some of my more valuable to me pops. Um, we have Emily from Corpse Bride, Coraline in her raincoat, and then Azula. And I don't think I'll ever take Azula out of the box. And I'm one who usually does take Funkos out of the box. But yeah, absolutely I, I do not want to take her out of the box. If we move to the left side of the top part of the bookcase, I have a Hermione Nendroid, and I hope I'm saying that right, but I really love this. There's so many different positions and styles you can have her in, and it's just so much fun. I do want to get more of these figures, um, but I currently just have her. Then I have my three selena pops she is one of my favorite singers of all time and people in my life know that so they've very graciously gifted me these and then this i got from oh my gosh i can't even remember but it was this really cool store in austin and uh it's just so cute it's a cat in a shark onesie I really love sharks, so I thought that was super cute. And then just behind here, I have the 20th edition Yasmin from Bratz. Actually, it was a gift, but they bought it because they knew I would want it for nostalgic reasons. So let's move on to the first row of my bookcase. So this first cube on the first row of my bookcase holds, I would say, mostly historical fiction 
and horror, but there are just some random books thrown in there as well. Um, to start off, I do have this pop of Tika from Bright, whose character design I have literally been obsessed with since that movie came out. So starting over here, you can't really tell what this is, so I'll pull it out for you. But I have the Metamorphosis. I had to read this for my high school AP literature class, and I really enjoyed it. It's super short, but I think packs a punch. And then I do have two copies of A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahara. I actually read this one, and I just bought this one the other day because I went to Barnes & Noble, and they had some signed editions um, for Black Friday. And all of the signed editions were the exact same, just her signature. When I opened this one, she had actually drawn a smiley face. Well, it's not really smiling, but she drew a face in it, and none of the other ones had it, so I just knew I had to get the signed one, uh, because this is one of my favorite books of all time. I really need to reread it. This is my first time filming a bookshelf tour, so please bear with me on the logistics. I have The Shadow of the Wind, which I just read, and I actually read it during a reading vlog so I'll link that above if you're interested to hear more of my thoughts. Pachinko I've actually been in the middle of for a while now. I think I started that in August 2020 and now it's December 2021. So it's been a long time. The Book Thief I also had to read in high school and I have the movie edition unfortunately but I will never get rid of it because this book is extraordinary and I loved it and I loved the project I had to do for it. This is a book I don't really talk about on my channel much, which is Tigers Not Daughters. It's a YA book that I found randomly at a indie bookstore where I live and I've never heard anyone talk about it and I really, really enjoyed it. So if you like mysteries and family dynamics, yes, this is the book for you and also YA, but yeah. Another historical fiction that I feel like nobody talks about is Above the East China Sea by Sarah Bird. I read this my junior year of high school and I think about it more than I would have thought I would. Mm, I, I guess if I keep going into every single book then this is going to take forever but I don't know I just love talking about books and I love showing what books I have and what my thoughts were on them clearly because I have a booktube channel <laughs> but you know what let's just I'll try to hurry this up I have the joy luck club which is a book that is good but the movie's better not gonna lie <laughs> and then a dowry of blood I read this year in a reading vlog and I gave five stars to absolutely loved and then I have things have gotten worse since we last spoke which I didn't like so why would I show it I have one edition of Frankenstein that oh my gosh usually it comes out pretty easily but I love Frankenstein it's probably my favorite classic alongside of Mice and Men but this edition I couldn't pass up when I found it in the used bookstore because the silver foiling on the cover and the edges are silver as well I have House of Leaves which I've been reading since spring so when, when will I finish that? I'm not sure. Then I just have a random graphic novel, a uh, Hades and Persephone, which the art is stunning and beautiful, but the story wasn't that good. So I just keep it because I like the art. I read this recently and I just, oh my gosh, the art is so nice. It just sucks that the story wasn't that interesting let's just move on to the next shelf so this is my horror manga shelf or my darker themed manga you could say i have this figurine of ghost face from scream here that is actually one of my most prized possessions um look at that wow it's gorgeous but i'll move him out of the way I guess we'll just start on the stack. I have volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 of Blood on the Tracks. Actually, I thought I had volume 6. Um, I guess not. I absolutely loved it. 
and would highly recommend it. I'm waiting for the seventh one to come out because I know for a fact I read the sixth one. It's probably just behind all of this. And then I have Ibitsu, which I was really, really into. And then the ending I didn't understand. And I looked up reviews and it appears that there's like one of two endings it could have been. And other people were confused as well. Blade of the Immortal, which is like... I don't even know how to explain this, but I loved the art. Am I continuing the series? As of right now, no. But it stays because I love it. The the art and the aesthetic of it. And then I have my favorite horror manga series, Happiness, which is about vampires. So that's volumes 1 through 10 or the entire thing. And then I have Tomi and Uzumaki by Junji Ito. I have a random graphic novel of Frankenstein. And then I just have this random... Uh, creepy cat manga which was interesting but not amazing <laughs> okay and behind all of that I have Frankenstein by Junji Ito I have the mermaid saga volumes one and two I do have volume six of blood on the tracks it was just hiding <laughs> so I'll put that with that um flowers of evil complete uh number volume one uh this is my least favorite of Shujo Shini's work and I'm not going to continue with that series because I hated it. Did I hate it? No, I don't think I hated it, but I didn't love it. So yeah, actually, I don't think there was space. That's why I had this back here. So we can move on to my next manga shelf, which has some fun things. So this cube holds my more light, fun, I guess more upbeat manga, even though they a lot of them do have darker themes. They also just match the, I guess, theme or aesthetic I was going for for this cube. So that's why they're here. Um, so I do have these, uh, like, Russian... Oh my gosh. Look, not me struggling. But anyway, I have these uh, Russian doll things from Wendy's for like a Happy Meal, basically. But Wendy's version. I just think they're cute because I like the colors. And then I have two keychains that I got from the swap meet. One is a pink cow, which is so freaking cute. And I won't hear any criticism about her. Then another is a rat, who again is just so cute. I love. <laughs> anyway, and then I do have two figures from Spirited Away. And then I have Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. So the first series I want to talk about on this shelf is Orange Volumes 1 and 2. One of my most favorite manga series ever. I only read these two because I don't want to read the other ones that have come out just because if they feel more like money grabbers for me and I'm just not about that. It's been like <clears throat> I think like almost four years since I've read these so yep and as you can see I do have more back there but we'll get into that in a in a moment. I have volumes one through three of Dawn of the Ark Canna which is a manga series I read back in high school. Now I have the complete set of volumes one through twelve of Arisa which I enjoyed and I like how they look on my shelves but would I reread it I don't know and then I have volume one of erased which is one of my favorite animes ever I just couldn't really get into the manga for some reason which is why I don't have the other ones and then I have one of the cutest graphic novels ever sheets I don't have the second one and I'm not really that interested but this artwork is very unique and amazing Okay, so I have volume one of Banana Fish, which I actually just recently finished. Um, I liked it, and I was going to watch the anime, but they changed the character design. So now I'm not going to watch the anime, because I don't like that. <laughs> I have volumes one and two of Night on the Eyes. And then I have two super cute books, but they just aren't that deep for me. I have I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which, oh my gosh, is such a good manga and so so sad <laughs> anyway I have volumes one and two of blue exorcist which I loved watching back in high school I have volume one of haikyuu I just didn't really get into it and then I have the queen's night and yeah that's pretty much all I have back there 
So let's go ahead and move on to maybe my favorite shelf, which is my Avatar shelf. I absolutely love this shelf. I can't wait for more comics to come out. Ugh, my favorite. I have Zuko. Oh, I have Zuko. And then I have Sokka. I just love these Funko Pops so much. I have Momo and Appa. Here's Appa and then Momo. I do have a Katara Pop as well. The only pop that I'm looking for still for this collection is General Iroh, just because he's my favorite character. But yes, look at Toph. Love her. Back here, I just have a jar that has some TBR stuff, um, stickers, and then I do have a bunch of pins in here as well, like this one, Thunder Mifflin, Appa. Wow, these all fell. Nice. Yeah, this shelf is very, this shelf is very touchy. <laughs> like, as soon as I touch anything on it, they all fall. And that just means that the, the show makers need to put out more comics or whatever. My favorite comic is this one, Suki Alone, and it came out this year. It's all about Su Suki's time in the Fire Nation prison that she was put into. And oh my gosh, I loved it. The ending actually made me tear up. Like, for real. It really did. Gosh, that is just such an amazing comic. I have the art of the animated series behind Avatar, which 5 out of 5 stars. If you love that type of book or that type of thing, I highly suggest picking it up. I guess this shelf could be considered my classics shelf. I have a Pop Funko of Katie from Sean Chi here, as well as the mom. I just love how the red brings out the red in these spines and the green brings out the green here. I absolutely love the fighting scene where she's wearing this and I love how they filmed it. Also, this is one of my more beautiful Funkos. Okay, so I have Weathering Heights, which was a terrible book and I hated it. <laughs> and then I have The Alchemist and The Blue Sky, which I think I gave both of these three stars. They didn't really stick out to me. The Handmaid's Tell I read my senior year of high school and I loved the project I had to do for that one as well. It was, I don't know, it was nice. And now we're starting to get into the classics that I really, really enjoy. The Phantom of the Opera was one I read this year, and I really liked it. I also really enjoyed Carmilla this year. I'll link the vlog where I read this. And then I have, let's see, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five different copies of Frankenstein. Um, This one, I love the design of. And then, let's see. I also like this one because it's creepy. And it's the 1818 text, so I do like that. Okay, then I have Animal Farm, which I really liked. When the Emperor was Divine, just okay. Lord of the Flies, hated. Norwegian Wood, I would not consider a classic. And quite frankly, that book is one of the worst books I've ever read in my life. Um, it's disgusting. And I just kept it because it fit with the books here, I guess. But as soon as I get another book that fits here, that's leaving. And then I have two by um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I have Hamlet. And then, oh my gosh, Of Mice and Men, which I have just destroyed because of how deep I went into it. And I read this my sophomore year of high school. And I think about it all the time. So moving on to the next shelf, we have my, mostly this holds my adult literary fiction, but, or just adult fiction in general. I also have my Alberto and Luca Pops here. That movie came out at such a perfect time for me. I just, that movie will always hold a little special place <laughs> in my heart just because of the time it came out it was just what I needed um and so yes I absolutely 
love these okay so starting here we have my copy of malibu rising which i freaking loved this book gave it five stars i also annotated it i need to go back and reread this already and i read it this year <laughs> the midnight library was just okay um the vanishing half was a book that was on was one of two books that got five stars from me in 2020 um this is just an amazing novel and the cover is gorgeous as well then i have dominicana daisy jones and six another great book and then i have my three books in the practical magic series i'm missing the fourth one but i'm honestly not interested in reading it so i don't really care this one was five stars the best book in that series one of the best books i read this year I really, really enjoyed this. This one, this one, Practical Magic, the movie's better. Hate to say it, but it's true. Um, and then I actually haven't read this. It should be on my classics, but I like how it matched over here. Love that. I love the vibe. I have my only other poetry book that I have out. I just, I'm not super into poetry, so yeah. The House in the Cerulean Sea, I really loved. It was such a great one. We Were Liars, I don't know what to think of that. And it's also YA, I just literally don't know where to put it. And then I have volume one of Lore Olympus, which is a webtoon that they put into a graphic novel. This is just volume one. I believe it goes up to chapter 25. After I finished this, I did download webtoon and I did read everything else that's out at this time. So I am 100% caught up on this and this is a Hades and Persephone retelling and the artwork is literally something I have never seen before and I love it yeah it's amazing I highly recommend and if you read this and you're like okay that was boring download webtoon and read the rest of it okay let's move on to the next shelf. Alrighty, and this is the first non-fiction shelf that I have here. I have this really cute figurine that Rin Reads gave me. It's the learner, and so I thought, hey, you know, the learner goes with non-fiction. Anyway, that's why she's here. And then I just have two memoirs here, and then I kind of move into more social sciences, um, except for this one's also a memoir, but... And I didn't like how it looked over here. So we have our social sciences. And then I have books that I think will help me be a better teacher. Like a history teaching toolbox. And why won't you just tell us the answer? This shelf is pretty bland if you're not into nonfiction, social sciences, memoirs, or history. So I guess I will just speed this one up. Two books that stand out on this shelf to me. Chinese Cinderella, which I read in high school and I freaking loved, and Educated by Tara Westover. So, if you're interested, check them out. Okay, actually, and then I have an archaeology book here and a book about ancient Egypt here that I need to get to. Actually, this shelf and the next shelf I show you are the books that I have the most unread um, on. <laughs> So yeah, this shelf is all of my nonfiction history books. I have this adorable turtle figurine that I like to pretend is Master Uguay from Kung Fu Panda. And then I have one of my most favorite pops of all time, which is Lara Croft. And if y'all have not played the latest three Tomb Raider games, I highly, highly suggest playing them because they're amazing. Okay, so I have here a reference book that I'm going to use in my classroom one day. Um, it is a world history textbook put in simple terms for students, so I love that. And wow, it is gorgeous. I need to finish these, need to start this. I'm halfway through this one. <laughs> this one I'm also working my way through and I need to finish working my way through this. Do y'all see the pattern? <laughs> I start them and then I never finish them and I don't know why because I really enjoy reading nonfiction historical books when they're not boring. Like these two are kind of boring and I've finished both of them. 
as you can see, I've took many notes. <laughs> I read this one in another reading vlog back at the beginning of this year. I really thought I was going to do my senior thesis on the Roanoke colony, and then I literally did not. <laughs> and so now I also have this one because I thought I was going to need it, and I, I didn't need it. But I'm still interested and do want to read it. And then these two titles here, I think I'm the most excited to get to... I guess maybe not and I just think they're gonna have incredible information we have when women rule the world six queens of Egypt and then the last kings of Shanghai the rival Jewish dynasties that helped create modern China so let's just move on to the last row bottom row of my bookcase that actually has books off to the side you see some funkos those are my boyfriends so i'm not going to get into those just because those are not mine starting with this shelf i have another lara croft pop again play the video games they're so much fun <laughs> but i love this hi milo do you want to make an appearance do you want to be in the video i don't know isn't a is it a laura reads video without milo oh <laughs> he's like unhand me on the left side we have one of the prettiest books i own gods of jade and shadow so then i have vena nostra which is such a cool book and i read it earlier this year for a vlog so maybe i'll link that it's like everything i read is for vlogs now i guess and we have malice and the poppy war we have the first two in the um winter night trilogy which I need to finish reading because I really am enjoying it. I'm going to be reading this this month, so that's cool. And then I have my Lord of the Rings section here. I have the 50th anniversary one volume edition, so basically how they're supposed to be anyway, since they were written to be one book and not multiple. Oh my gosh, there's a receipt in here. I bought this on... April 18th, 2017. I, I, I bought this when I was in high school still. <laughs> and then I have this edition of The Hobbit, which I actually like more than Lord of the Rings. I like the Lord of the Rings movies better than the Hobbit movies, but I like the Hobbit book better than the Lord of the Rings book. And then I have The Silmarillion, which I love the old time feeling of this cover. And I have read this, so I'm not a fake fan. <laughs> just kidding it's actually a very stale read and i would never reread it again an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green which is the first book in this series i'm not going to continue with it just because i don't really vibe with sci-fi but i did like this wow i forgot that the, these comics were back here and i said i would read them this year and i only have like a few more weeks left in the year to read them okay and then this stack back here is actually going to surprise both of us because i don't even know what's back here so i have a copy of you which i read in high school and um before the series was even a thing and I did like it then. I just never finished the series. Oh, and then I have Pretty Girls, which is the best thriller I've ever read in my entire life. And I love it. I have We Are Okay. I actually bought this book in Paris at Shakespeare and Company. So that's why I keep it. I have Starfish. I loved this book. I just don't know where to put YA Contemporary. So I guess I put YA Contemporaries back here because I also really loved this book as well, which is Turtles All the Way Down. And then I just have, um, I guess a random horror book, My Best Friend's Exorcism. So this next little shelf or cube little thing is my fantasy book still, but more YA new adult and middle grade. And I also have two of my favorite characters from X-Men ever, Storm and Mystique. I have loved X-Men since I was a kid and my dad would force me to watch them. So when I told my boyfriend that I really, really loved them, he gifted me these. Okay, so to start off with, we have my copy of Howl's Moving Castle, which is probably one of my favorite books ever. I annotated this a lot. <laughs> I'm 
I really, really love this. And I actually just finished Amari and the Night Brothers last night or the night before. I think it would make an amazing movie. All right, and then now we have my original copies of the Court of Thorns and Roses series. I have the original trilogy here. And then I have the A Court of Silver Flames. So I didn't want the new cover, so I bought this off Etsy, and then I tried to find the shop for the other video I did on this, and um, yeah, it was gone, so I don't know what happened to it. And then I have these two, which I read this year as well. Really loved this one, that one was just okay. Next, I have more Sarah J. Mass books back here. This one was, oh my gosh, dusty is what it is. But this was the one I actually read, um, and I annotated it a little bit, not that much. And then here's the cover for the other one. Yep, that one didn't really love. And then this is just the new covers of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I have some covers that I got as a gift that I want to put on those, but I am waiting to get um like cover cases i guess you could say or like a uh, plastic to put over it because i don't want to mess them up this might even be the messiest shelf or cube on this bookcase this is my spanish shelf you know um so just to get some stuff out of the way i have a bunch of avatar stickers um yep i just don't know where i want to put them all yet i have wow I have some sticky tabs. I have, oh, there's more. I do not annotate that much. Why do I have that many sticky tabs? So then I have Raya. I just love her character design. So I wanted to get a Funko. Yep. And then I have Mushu and the Cricket. This little Mulan car. Because, again, you know, I just absolutely love Mulan. My favorite Disney movie. Here we have her in her military gear. I have a bunch of children's books at the front because I read at a ch child's level in Spanish. <laughs> I'm actually in the middle of this one and I really really like it so far. I loved this series in English as a kid and then I have my Harry Potter series here. I don't have all of them and I want to get them all matching. This one's the only hardcover I have so I'll probably end up getting another one in paperback just so they match. Um, which I know they don't need to, but I like them to. I just like these covers because they're different. And then I have this, which is a series on Netflix that I actually have watched a bit of. I never finished it, though. I just love Carmen's character design as well, so that's why I have it. But yes, it's nice. I have some transparent sticky notes just for annotating purposes. I also have this fake microphone, um that I used to use in videos, but I don't anymore. I have a phrase book, Spanish English dictionary. Wow, that's that's really bad. Um, please, please ignore that. I have Street Spanish, The Idiot's Guide to Learning Spanish, and then I have some more children's books here. I have The Little Mermaid, which is a bilingual book in English and Spanish. And then I have this one which I loved in English as a kid, so I got in Spanish. I actually still have not read this one. I definitely need to do that. Just more textbooks, workbook. This actually has nothing to do with Spanish, so I don't really know why this is here. This is a study book for a test I need to pass in order to get my licensure in the state of Texas. This is actually the textbooks, the textbook I had to use in my college course of Spanish. Um, the cover. Yep. Wow, it's been it's been a few years since I had to do that in spring and summer semester. But yeah, great textbook actually. Really liked it. And then my boyfriend's mom actually gave me this as a gift one year. Um, because these are all the, the songs that she would sing to her children. And yeah, I just really like it. It's a very nice gift. So my tripod completely broke on me and... I can't fix it and then this fell off also so this last shelf is going to be shaky and I apologize for that but 
This just holds my vinyl records. I could film a separate video going more in depth if you wanted to know which ones I have and which ones I don't. Just let me know in the comments below. I also have a notebook here. I just have a lot of cool stickers in this that I like. So... Oh my gosh, I forgot I had that sticker in there. And then I have only one pop on this, and it is my Miles Morales one. I had a red and black version of him, but it broke, and so my boyfriend gave me the purple and green one to make up for it breaking, because I was heartbroken. Alrighty, that is my entire bookcase. Let me know in the comments which cube or section of my bookcase is your favorite. And that bottom row is actually just closed. So, yep, only have these ones here. And that's all I have to say.